Thursday night round one NCAA tournament post game reaction show. I'm your host, Aaron Torres. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's having a great day. Hope everybody enjoyed round one of the NCAA tournament. It is 1145 Eastern time. Couple games still going on, but the bottom line is you don't need me to tell you where we are going to start. We're going to react to the whole day of college basketball, but the story, of course, is the University of Kentucky. They lose 80-76 to to Oakland. We're going to talk about that game and everything that comes with it. Should John Calipari step aside? Is this the final game that he coached? How can this keep happening? We're going to be talking about all of that. And of course, we will get to the other games in round one of the NCAA tournament. As I said, a couple are still going on right now. Uh, as I record here, Drake up three at uh, against Washington State, NC State up on Texas Tech, and Sanford and Kansas have just started the second half. So everybody come on in, everybody join us. And listen, I will be blunt. I'd love to sit here and lie and say that we are going to give all 32 teams equal time tonight that we're going to talk Wagner as much as we talk Kentucky, but we will not. We're going to open with this crazy, crazy, crazy result out of Pittsburgh momentarily. First off, just want to thank again, our partners, bet us, bet us sportsbook. Listen, tournaments over Kentucky fans. You need a way to entertain yourself. So bet us. How about this? Your first three deposits, click the link in the show description, your first three deposits they are matching 125%. So you blew your whole bankroll on Kentucky. Guess what? Deposit $100 tomorrow. They will give you $125 to play with for free. Lose that. They'll give you another $125 on and on. 125% deposit bonus on your first three deposits. We appreciate BetUS. We appreciate their support. We also appreciate Bracket Fanatics at BracketFanatics.com. They are our partners in our Aaron Torres Pod Bracket Challenge fourth year in a row, love working with them, would love to give an update on where the bracket stands, but obviously there are a lot of games still going on. I don't know about you. I did have Kentucky in my final four, so my bracket is busted. But for those of you who are running brackets, who are planning on running a bracket next year, Bracket Fanatics is the best spot. Bottom line is it is great. I appreciate everyone who you can run your own brackets. The great thing about Bracket Fanatics is that they collect all the money for you. They distribute all the money for you. So if you have a $5 office pool next year, you can go ahead and use BracketFanatics.com. They will take care of the collection of the money, the distribution of the money, all that good stuff. We'll get you an update maybe by the end of the show on who is leading the Aaron Torres pod bracket challenge. But... With that said, there is no more time to waste here on a busy Thursday night, first night of the NCAA tournament. So let's get to the topic of the day. By the way, everybody drop your comments in the comments section. We will be responding to everybody and everything. We did an immediate reaction after the Kentucky game on YouTube, but this is the more formal, long form segment. So we are going to start. There is only one place to start, and it is with the University of Kentucky. Kentucky comes in. We know what is at stake for Kentucky after several disappointing tournament efforts. And instead of stepping up, instead of proving the doubters wrong, instead of silencing the critics, what happened? History repeats itself. Kentucky loses to Oakland. Oakland, not the A's, not the Raiders who don't even exist. The Oakland Golden Grizzlies of somewhere in Michigan. No disrespect to any Oakland fans that are tuning in. Final score, 80-76. to 76. Kentucky for what? The fifth straight year, third straight NCAA tournament since they were not. There was no tournament in 2020, 2021. They weren't in it. 22, 23, 24. They are out of the NCAA tournament before the end of the first weekend. There is so much to get into, and in a minute, we're going to discuss John Calipari. If he needs to resign, what's next? Again, drop your questions and comments, uh, and we will go ahead and get to them momentarily. But let me start by saying this, and I said this in the instant reaction, but it stands true. 
Everybody's going to talk about Jack Golke, the star of the show. 32 points, 10 three-pointers, one short of the NCAA tournament record. But to me, Jack Golke is a microcosm of what is wrong with Kentucky and what was wrong in this game, okay? I don't really care that some dude hit 10 threes good for him. To me, you know when I was concerned about Kentucky? I was texting a buddy, loves college hoops, he's a high school coach, and right away, I was concerned with Kentucky the moment, probably about three minutes into the game, and that sounds stupid, how could you feel that way? First possession, Trey Mitchell gets a bucket. Great. Second possession on. It was like Kentucky had no idea that Oakland was going to play a zone when they essentially only played zone the entire year. And so to me, what does that say? It says a team is unprepared, unready to go. You know the zone is coming. Listen, I'm not scheme guy. I'm not X's and O's guy. I don't have all the answers. But the $8 million a year head coach needs to have them. The highly paid assistant coaching staff needs to have them. And they came out completely unprepared. Beyond that, you know what would piss me off if I was a Kentucky fan more than anything else? It ain't Jack Golke going all Steph Curry on us. It is the fact you know the most telling stat to me in this game? Kentucky was out-rebounded by Oakland. And that was the other thing that stood out to me early in the game. Was that if you watch this game, early on, Agana and Yenso, I'm not picking on one kid specific. He's getting bullied in the paint. Every loose ball, every scramble drill, every rebound is going to Oakland. You have three seven-footers on your roster, Kentucky. You are supposed to have the answer in every way, shape, and form, and you can't get a rebound against Oakland. Oakland ends up winning the rebound battle 40-39. to 39. That's not about players. That's not about personnel. That's about effort and want to, and again, it speaks to the fact that this team wasn't prepared to keep the thing going. Listen, Jack Golke is the story. You don't need me to tell you, but this guy, all he did was take threes all year. I mean, listen, I'm looking at the stat sheet right now. Let me see if I can pull up the stats on him really quick. Attempted, how about this? He attempted 9.9 .9 shots per game on the season. 9.6 of them were three-pointers. All he, this guy does was take threes. I'm going to lose my voice before the end of this show because I'm so furious. But it speaks to the game plan. It speaks to the lack of preparation. And it speaks to a team that simply was not ready to go. And so it falls on John Calipari. We're going to talk about him in a minute. But let me also say this. As bad as Cal was, what was so, like, like, what was so, and by the way, this falls on Cal, right? Because remember, Cal is the guy. And, and this is something Kentucky fans have been saying for years. Credit Kentucky fans. They were ahead of everyone else on this specific thing. They were saying years ago, Cal coaches tight in big games, and it has an effect on his players. The only guys that showed up ready to play, Antonio Reeves was unbelievable. And it's so sad because this was a kid that struggled so much in his first tournament. He was so improved this year. I thought he was as improved as any player I have ever seen. Went from basically a three-point shooter, and that's it, to an All-American who is going to get drafted as a three-level scorer, a leader. He was fearless, 27 points. And Trey Mitchell came to play as well, but that was it. Reed Shepard, listen, man, I, I'm not criticizing a kid. He's 18 years old. His best days are ahead. He's going to make millions, and he deserves all the praise that he has gotten to get Kentucky to this point. But at the same time, in the biggest game of his career, you know, he was the guy all week long talking about, you know, I, I, I practiced these shots in my driveway. Uh, I was, I was the kid that watched every Kentucky game. And then I would go out the next morning and like, I get it, but you could see the tension on that poor kid. And I feel bad singling him out because Kentucky would not have been a three seed in this bracket without him.
But when you go one for five with three points, that's just not good enough. Rob Dillingham, not good enough. That three-pointer he hit late was essentially the only highlight for Rob Dillingham. And so you have the worst performance of Reed Shepard's career. You have the worst performance, arguably, of Rob Dillingham's career. DJ Wagner was a no-show. I thought actually Justin Edwards did play pretty well. But uh, but remember that missed dunk by Justin Edwards, too? Wasn't that a microcosm for, the, for, for this game? Because I'm pretty sure that missed dunk would have tied the game. He misses it, and that was the entire game for Kentucky. They could never get on the right side of things. They could never... They could never, ever, ever just match the score, get on top, do whatever it took to take the lead. And it was just one of those nights. But the problem, of course, and you know where I'm going with this, you have way too many of these nights under John Calipari. And so listen, this has now, this is not a coincidence. And, and Kentucky fans, you know this. I, I'm really talking to the people that don't follow Kentucky on a day-to-day -day basis. But Kentucky fans already know this. The bottom line is this is just a trend. Listen, I, I said this and I tweeted it out. That that line that Jay Williams keeps butchering, uh, I'm the one that created it. So the whole, the Kentucky is the Dallas Cowboys. I know he said it. I said it three years ago after the St. Peter's loss. And the analogy, when used correctly, actually makes sense. Kentucky is the Dallas Cowboys of college basketball. Why? Because with Kentucky, it's like the Cowboys. It's not that they don't win. They win a lot of games. They just don't win the games that matter. And I used that analogy three years ago, and it's more applicable now than it was three years ago when you lose to St. Peter's. With the Cowboys, as an example, they're great against the Washington Commanders. They're great. Uh, when they're playing whoever, the New Orleans Saints on a on a on a Sunday 1 p.m. Eastern start. They're even great sometimes. They have great regular season moments. They beat the crap out of the Eagles on Sunday night football. We're like, the Cowboys are fixed. Then what happens? Playoff start, choke against the Packers. It's the same with Kentucky basketball. This year, to have this game after the way this season ended, I truly believe they were playing as well as anybody. In college basketball late, and I really thought the AM game would be a wake up call for them. Instead, it's the exact opposite. Less of a no, it was more of a no show today, less of an effort. And again, let's stop beating around the bush. Let's get to John Calipari. Because to me, I'm sorry, there are zero excuses for John Calipari. Okay. And like I said, this is now a trend. Early exits from the SEC tournament, early exits from the NCAA tournament. And it's funny, I talked about this last Friday when I was at Stadium Swim with producer Matt. We were doing live shows from Vegas, and what did I say? I said, I would, Kentucky fans have every right to be pissed. You have every right to be furious. You spend your hard-earned money going to Nashville for the SEC tournament, going to the NCAA tournament, and this team doesn't show up. It's one thing if you're Kentucky, you get to the SEC final and you lose to a good Auburn team because they're just as good as you. It's one thing if you're Kentucky and you get to the Sweet 16 and you lose to Marquette or you lose to Houston. But to lose to Oakland because you were not prepared, you were not ready to go, that is absolutely inexcusable. And so it falls on John Calipari. And I'll just be blunt. I know what the buyout is, $33 million. I know how stubborn John Calipari is. I do wonder if this is the last game that he coaches at Kentucky. And, and, and I, I get the idea that he's stubborn, $33 million, but how can he come back? For two reasons. One, you can no longer say, well, you know, blah, 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 blah. I'm still the right man for the job. We'll get it figured out. Go back like three or four off seasons. 2021, you missed the tournament. You shake up your coaching staff, bring in Chin Coleman, Orlando, Antigua. 2022, you lose in the first round. Okay, you, you, you know, whatever. 2023, you lose again. You shake up the offense. You get this pace and space. You bring in John Welsh as an assistant coach. Well, guess what? What is the fix now? There are no fixes. There are no tweaks. This simply is not working. And so when I look at this game, I think what stands out to me is pretty straightforward. 
is that I look at this game. Uh, hold on one sec. I'm tweeting here really quick. Hold on. Is, you know, when I look at this game, what I would say is this, is that with John Calipari, one, there is no more fix. You went the transfer route. Then you went back to high school players. You shook up your coaching staff. You shook up your offense. It's the same result regardless of what the shakeup is. So you have that part of it. On top of that, here is the other thing. If you're John Calipari, do you want to come back? Because listen, because of my background in this industry, I talk to a lot of Kentucky fans. We I talk to, you know, the, the college kids that helped us run the Torres on Kentucky account. I talk to, you know, Kentucky fans that have found me through the years. And here's the thing. This is what I truly believe. And, and I think the Kentucky fan base has been misconstrued, miss, miss whatever. I think there's, I think what a lot of people think is that like 99.9% .9 of Kentucky fans want John Calipari out. No, 99.9% .9 of Kentucky fans want it to end well for John Calipari, but they, they don't want it to end like this, but there is a standard for Kentucky basketball that is not being met. And so for me, if you're Calipari, I get why quit when you could get 33 more million. It's pretty simple. It's because you probably have a hundred million in the bank at this point. You can still take that role where you make a million dollars a year as a liaison to the athletic department. Do you really want to come back when all of your fans are frustrated with you, are infuriated with you, are over you because this keeps on happening? It's not a one-off deal. We had St. Peter's. We had Kansas State last year, which I know isn't the same thing, but it's still disappointing nonetheless. You had Texas A&M in the SEC tournament this year, Vandy in the SEC tournament last year, and it's just it's just an emotional roller coaster I don't know that you would want to deal with. And so I'll be curious because the thing is like, and I saw Calipari's post-game comments. First of all, by the way, I tweeted this out, but I truly believe it is Calipari should, all he should have answered the questions as, did anyone, has anyone ever seen that famous Jim Calhoun press conference where they keep asking about Ryan Gomes? Ryan Gomes was a Connecticut player who wasn't very good, uh, fell through the cracks, ended up at Providence, turned into an All-American. And they kept asking Calhoun about it. And finally, at one point, he just says, what do you want me to say? I effed up. I effed up. I'm the worst coach ever. Blame me. I suck. That's what John Calipari should be saying tonight because there's nothing else to say. I don't want to hear about how young you are. I saw him talk about how old college basketball is. It's like, we've known this is where college basketball is going. You have doubled down on the freshman stuff. I have defended you on that because it has worked to this point. But at this point, I just, I don't even know what else to say. And I just bring it up because I look at this situation and I sit there and say, I just wonder if John Calipari even wants to come back at this point, because it is going to be so toxic. It is going to be so terrible. The thing about the next eight months, I mean, John Calipari is not going to coach a game until November and all he's going to hear every single time anything happens is how terrible he is, how he's awful, how he's overpaid, how he needs to go, how he needs to be fired. And I know what some people say, well, he's got another great recruiting class coming in. Well, guess what? Kentucky fans are over the great recruiting class. They've seen it. If you couldn't get it done with this group, Reed Shepard and Rob Dillingham are probably going to be top 10 picks. DJ Wagner, it, listen, I had a buddy text me, not even a Kentucky fan. He said, Torres, they got two lot of, I, I, he said to me this, he said, they got two NBA guards on that roster. How did that happen? I said, no, no, no. They got at least four NBA guards, if you include Wagner and Antonio Reeves, and probably seven or eight NBA players overall. And so, you could sit there and say, well, he's going to have a great class next year. You can't leave now. Jaden Quaintance is coming in. Carter Knox is coming in. Boogie Fland is coming in. But every single year that he is the Kentucky coach, he is going to have a great recruiting class. It is not resulting in wins. And here's the crazy part. Who knows what this roster is going to look like next year? I know Antonio Reeves, we could have never guessed he would be this. But Antonio Reeves is gone. Trey Mitchell is gone. Obviously, Dillingham's gone. I would assume Shepard's gone. I would assume Wagner is gone. I'm not saying who should or should not go, but you're bringing in a bunch of freshmen again with maybe an Adu Thiero, and that's really it. So I could go on and on, but I really, this one felt like, okay, St. Peter's, we're going to figure it out. 
We're going to get better. We're going to tweak some stuff, the famous John Calipari tweak, and we're going to roll. But I don't think this is a tweak situation. I think this is one where you just sit there and you just say there is no more tweak. There is nothing else to do. There is no more change to be made. And I just wonder if this is really it for Coach Cal and Kentucky. Tell you what, producer Matt, this is what I need from you. Let's get a quick word from our partners and let's do some Kentucky questions that we'll get to. Uh, and then we'll get to the rest of the tournament because this is all anybody cares about today. I could sit here and talk about Arizona blowing out Long Beach State or whatever. This is the story. This is the topic. Quick word from our partners if you have it ready, uh, producer Matt, and then we will talk more Kentucky. Get to your questions. America's favorite sportsbook and casino, Live Betting and Racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer, a 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits, plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. All right, everybody. I am back. Good to be back. Good to be back. Uh, tell you what, I see the chat is humming. Let's get to some of the questions that uh, producer Matt, whatever you pull up you think is interesting. Dan Rivera, who's a great listener and supporter of the show. Dan, I appreciate you, man. I'm out on Cal. He has to go now. UK looked uninterested in this game. No excuse when you have four NBA guys. So, Dan, I think you encapsulated my frustration as a non-Kentucky fan. I know everybody thinks like, oh, Torres loves Kentucky. No, but they're the most relevant, interesting program in college basketball. I want, I'm not going to lie. I want them to be good. It's good for my business. Just like it's good if you cover as an example, the NFL, it's great when uh, the Seattle Seahawks are good. It's better when the Dallas Cowboys are either really good or really bad. So Dan brings up, in my opinion, the most important point in all of this, okay? The most important point is the lack of urgency in this game. Think about it. Think about all the teams that you saw today, guys. Think about every team you saw from... BYU and Duquesne all the way up until what's going on right now with three games still going on. Kansas is pulling away. Uh, by the way, Drake is up by one on Wazoo and NC State is pulling away. So think about what Dan said. I want to reread Dan's comment. I'm out on Cal. He has to go now. UK looked uninterested in this game. We saw 32 teams today. I would argue that one came out flat. And it was the University of Kentucky, which had the most, most, at, I don't know if it's the most at stake, but the most pressure, the most this, and they were coming off a loss. I keep going back to what I said at Stadium Swim when we did our live show last Friday. I was more disappointed in Tennessee last Friday on the opening night of the SEC tournament than I was Kentucky because Tennessee was coming off a loss to end the regular season, and I assumed they would show up ready to play in the SEC tournament. They did not, and that's Kentucky tonight. You can, de as a fan, we're all fans. I'm wearing my Mora Hurley 2024 shirt right now, okay? Been watching hoops all day. I'm a UConn guy. I'm not going to hide it. You can deal with it if the other team's just better. You can deal with it if the other team does everything that they were supposed to do. What you can't deal with, your team not showing up ready to play. Again, the only stat, in my opinion, that matters that rebounding stat, because that rebounding stat tells you that Kentucky just showed up not ready to play. That tells you everything you need to know. You get out rebounded by Oakland. The, the Every loose ball goes to Oakland. And I'm sorry, like this should be a celebration of them, Greg Campy, et cetera. But that is just such piss poor effort. And I'm with Dan. Is I, you know, listen. We, we've all gone through the ebbs and flows, peaks and valleys of this Kentucky thing. I don't think I've ever, tr I have kind of hinted that maybe it's time for Cal to go. This is the first time I just, I, I don't think you can excuse this. And it's such a trend. It's not a coincidence. And again, it's one thing if you lose to a better team. It's another thing when you just don't show up. That's about coaching. That's about preparation. I go back to what I said. Everybody knows Oakland plays a zone. It looked like they didn't practice zone offense all year. And what I keep going back to with Cal is pretty straightforward. You cannot, it'd be one thing 
You lose this game, but who are you going to get that's better than Cal? Well, guess what? There are guys out there that can get you past the first round of the NCAA tournament, okay? And maybe the recruiting won't be as good. Maybe it won't be whatever. But in this portal year, who cares about high school recruits? So it's so frustrating. It's so disappointing. Um, Dan, I think your question is spot on. Producer Matt, let's keep it going with more of the questions here. Oh, my goodness, man. For producer, what are realistic Kentucky coaching option, co options that could be sleepers? I think that's Casey who said I'm the bad. It said Torres is the baddest mf -er that hosts a college basketball podcast. So shout out to Casey. So we did a coaching uh, piece on Calipari actually after the Gonzaga, uh, you know, the Gonzaga game a few weeks ago. And I'll say this about Cal. Give me one sec because I'm going to tweet this out so we could talk about this. I'm talking Kentucky coaching candidates now. Let me give me one second. All right. So, Casey, who says I'm the baddest mf -er that's ever hosted a college basketball podcast. Uh, this is, so we did it. We did a segment on, um, on John Calipari and who could potentially be the next head coach at Kentucky if he were to resign, step away. And I think, first of all, a couple things stand out. One, the difference between it, listen, the people watching probably have a better feel. I, I don't think you can raise 33 million to buy him out. It would have to be a resignation situation. Now, I did a piece on this about probably five, six weeks ago after the Gonzaga loss, and what I said was pretty straightforward. I said, um, the, the, let me backtrack. What I said, this is what I said, and, and things have changed since then. This is the point I'm trying to get to. I think Eric Musselman was probably a candidate five, six weeks ago after the way things at Arkansas went. I don't think he's as much of a candidate. Chris Beard got an extension. I assume that would probably preclude him from being a candidate. This is what I would do if I was Mitch Barnhart. And here's the problem with Mitch Barnhart. I don't think he's got that big, you know what, energy to make the moves necessary to actually get the guy that Kentucky needs. If I was Mitch Barnhart, this is what I would do. And this is, again, assuming that somehow, some way, John Calipari is willing to resign. He says, I just don't want to do this anymore. You know who the first call that I would make? I would get my money together. I would give Jay Wright that godfather, you know, Brian Kelly, Lincoln Riley football offer. Jay Wright, 10 years, $100 million. We'll figure out how it gets paid after. Like, like, like when, when Deion Sanders got hired as the head coach at Colorado in football, if you remember the introductory press conference, the, the AD says, this is how much we're going to pay him, blah, 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 this and that. Um, and what will the, 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 the media asks him, they said, well, what do you, what, um, how are you planning on paying this money? And the AD says, yeah, we're not worried about it. We'll figure it out after. Okay. I bring it up because that is what Mitch Barnhart has to do. Figure out the money after to me, Jay Wright is the answer. By the way, Jay Wright, who I think likes John Calipari, by the way, I'm sweating my, you know what off here. I don't care if it, if it shows I'm stressed, I'm sweating, whatever. Um, Jay Wright after the game really was sort of critical of, of John Calipari, if we're being perfectly honest. I saw a clip, it was posted on the Torres on UK uh, Twitter account, where J Jay Wright basically said, look, Cal's going to stop rolling out these freshmen and expecting to win at the highest level. You can't do that in this era with 22, 23, 24-year-olds. Now, I don't think that really applies to this game specifically, but if Kentucky played like that against that team, Imagine what it would have looked like if they ever got Houston, if they ever got UConn. UConn, listen, UConn's got grown men that throw elbows and are mean and are physical and are this and are that. So um, Jay Wright would be the first name that I would call. 10 years, $100 million. Coach Wright, I know you said you'll never coach again. At least think about it. Here, here, Here's the offer sheet. Think about it. You're like 65 years old. You probably won't make it till the end. You'll be set for your life. Your grandkids will be set for life, whatever. If Jay Wright said no, I would offer something very similar to Billy Donovan. Now, Billy Donovan's been out of college basketball forever. Um, and I don't know that one, he wants to come back. And two, I don't know how he would do in the portal NIL era.
But maybe you just be like, you know what? I was in the NBA. We were paying for players up there. We'll pay for players down here. I don't know. Um, what I think would happen, because I got this text in DM roughly 337 times over the course of that game, who I think Kentucky will go after, and this would not be my first call, is Scott Drew, the head coach at Baylor. And for whatever reason, it appears as though Mitch Barnhard, the AD at Baylor, at, at Kentucky, is infatuated with, um, with Scott Drew. And I don't get it. I, I get it. Listen, Scott Drew won a national championship. Okay, I'm not going to say he's not a great coach. I don't know that Scott Drew is built for Kentucky. And I like Scott Drew. I've had, actually had him on this podcast before. Um, he's a very easygoing guy. But the bottom line is, I know he's won a national championship, all that. But he has never really felt a real day of pressure in his life. And I don't know that Kentucky, the pressure cooker that it is, like, I don't know that he would be great in that situation. And so, again, my first call would be to Jay Wright. Make him say no. Then I'd call Billy Donovan. You know, I personally, me, I would see what Chris Beard's contract setup is like. Can you get him out of it? How much is it going to cost? All that good stuff. Great thing, by the way, about Jay Wright, great thing about Billy Donovan is there would be no buyout, right? If Billy Donovan gets fired in the NBA, you don't have to pay him anything. Um, if Jay Wright is obviously available, you don't have to pay him anything. So those would be the guys that I would go with. But again, Mitch Barnhart, he's an older guy. You know, he's kind of hesitant in this NIL era, da, 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 this and that. It seems like he's infatuated with Scott Drew. I don't really get it. Um, I see a couple people in the comments saying Bruce Pearl. Bruce Pearl's, listen, Bruce Pearl's a stud. Uh, you know, problem with Bruce Pearl, he's like 68 years old. Uh, not 68, he's like 63 basically the same age as, um, as, uh, as, uh, Calipari is by the way, checking in on a couple quick scores here. Wazoo has taken the lead. They are up 61 59 with 34 seconds left. Kansas up 10 on Sanford Sanford making a little run. I'll say this by the way, and we'll get some more of your questions here in a minute. My bracket was looking really good until Kentucky and shame on me because what did I say? I said, on Wednesday's show, I said, if you've shown me who you are, I'm going to believe it. It's why I faded Arizona. It's why I faded uh, a couple other teams, San Diego State. I can't remember everybody. It's why I picked, you know, listen, I picked Oregon over, um, you know, Oregon over uh, whatever you call it, Oregon over uh, South Carolina. I picked Dayton over Nevada. Love Nevada, but Steve Alford has shown me over the years, you start to trust him, um, he lets you down. Kentucky was the one I didn't stick to my own advice and they end up losing producer, Matt, I know we got some more questions in here. What else we got hot take Kentucky should go all in on a young dude, Todd golden. He's not proven, but what would it hurt to give him a couple years? Todd golden's an interesting one, man. And listen, you know, sometimes in life you got to take L's and I might have to take an L on, on Todd golden because it was really interesting. If you're an old school listener to this show, when he was at San Francisco, he was, he was at San Francisco before he got to Florida. And his whole thing, he he's a genius from this perspective. By the way, Todd Golden, I believe July 5th is his birthday. I'm July 6th, so I, I feel a little kinship with him, even though I've never met him. Anyway, um, he was very smart. When he was at San Francisco, he branded himself as the analytics guy. And it was like, oh, he, like, there was this big thing about, oh, he fouls up two when it's a bad free throw shooter. It's like, oh, it's genius, because if they miss it, the analytics say that it's the right move, whatever. And I remember saying at the time, I was like, okay, cool. But now you're going to the SEC. And you know who else has access to analytics? Nate Oates has access to analytics. You know who else has access to analytics? Bruce Pearl has access to analytics. Rick Barnes, uh, 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 John Calipari. And so I said, like, I don't really care about your analytics. Can you get players? Well, now he's gotten players at Florida. You notice how he's no longer the analytics guy? So, you know, I, I think he's a little young. He's like 36, 37 years old. I just think that is a big, big, big step after one really good year at Florida. I am very impressed by him, though. And, and that's what I might just have to take an L on. The one thing I respect, two things I respect about Todd Golden. He's young, but he believes in his philosophy. I've heard him say two things that, that I, I've been impressed by. One, he has jumped full speed ahead into the NIL stuff. He's just basically said, this is the world. We're paying players. I got to raise funds, et cetera. Two, he was very, you know, outspoken about, we don't, we're not going to recruit high school players. The only high school players we're going to recruit, they have to be a McDonald's all American caliber player that we know 
wants to be a Florida Gator. We're not wasting our time. Basically, the anti Calipari. It's an older player sport. We can get good players at Florida. I'll tell you, um, I could see a scenario where he is coaching at a blue blood type job. I don't know after one really good year at Florida that he's necessarily the right fit. But Justin, Justin Keith, that's a great comment. I'm not criticizing you. I'm just saying, I don't know. Will Wade, come on down. So, okay. What I would encourage everybody to do, I know McNeese got smoked. Um, I know McNeese got smoked earlier today. What I would encourage everybody to do, go back and listen to my interview with Will Wade. I have spoken with Coach Wade once, um, didn't know him much before the interview. I could not have been more impressed by that guy. People say, oh, he lost by a million points to Gonzaga. Okay. All right, cool. Well, guess what? Whatever. Um, you know, first of all, their, their tallest player is like six foot six. That He built a 30-win team overnight. He gets the portal. And what stood out to me about Will Wade, what stood out to me about Will Wade, did you hear the comment when he came on this show? Did you hear the comment that he made? He said, we were talking about the net and kind of, we kind of, we kind of really got behind the conversation that eventually ended up happening a few days later when the bracket came out and how the net is kind of screwy and all that stuff. And he said, the net is so skewed for the power conferences. He said, you, he said, what is a good job in the power conferences? He said, all of them are because everything is weighted in your favor. And so what he said was, he said, if you can raise just enough NIL money, you should make the tournament every year, regardless of what school you're at. And so to me, all I'll say about Will Wade, he is going to get something in the next couple of years, and it's going to be a vengeance with him at a major school in the NIL era. What I can tell you, there's all sorts of whispers. Arkansas fans will tell you, you know, Eric Musselman, is he trying to look for another spot? I don't know, but you hear stuff. I know Arkansas would go all in on Will Wade. I saw SMU obviously fired their coach today. I think that's an interesting landing spot. But I'm here to tell you, man, if you think about a guy that could be uh, in the uh, that could be potentially uh, in the the right spot at the right time, it's Will Wade. By the way, producer Matt is flagging me down uh, as Sanford has cut the lead to four with six minutes to go in this game. I'm telling you, man. By the way, how about Bucky McMillan, the head coach at Sanford? You think he couldn't have won with Rob Dillingham and Reed Shepard? You think he couldn't have won a game? Listen, by the way, if the uh, screen comes becomes a little uh, whatever, it's because I am putting the game on in the background. But uh, here we go. Hold on one sec. Forgive me. I got the volume on. I'm a mess right now. All right. Let's get to some more questions. This just turned into a Kentucky postgame show. By the way, we do have a final. NC State has won. They took care of business. And, and let me also say this. If you're not a Kentucky fan and listening, I, I do apologize. But this is the only story that matters today, right now, this second. I could break down Dayton, Nevada. Steve Alford choked again. I could break down BYU, Duquesne. If we have Duquesne fans in the in the mentions, I apologize. But, you know, I, I don't know what else there is to say. This is the story. And, and it's, it's the story because it's not just that Kentucky lost. It's that Kentucky lost again after St. Peter's two years ago, after a disappointment last year. So let's keep the questions going. This has just turned into a Kentucky postgame show, and that is totally okay. Kansas down by four. This was, Josh Bright says, this was the most important tournament, and Cal failed them again. Eventually, you have to call a spade a spade. And if Barnhart doesn't have the stones to do it, he needs to go too. Great question by Josh Bright. I mean, listen, <laughs> as far as who's going where, there is still a $33 million buyout. but. You know, they say Cal and Mitch Barnhart are not on speaking terms. They don't say it's it's factual. Like I, I can definitively say that. I think where it becomes an issue. By the way, this game is going to distract me. This show is going to suck. So I'm going to turn it off here for a minute. I'll turn it back on with under four to go. Um, but they say Mitch and and Cal don't speak. Well, they got to sit down because you know. And again, it goes back to what I said. If you're Cal, do you want to come back to this? This is going to be so toxic because. There are guys like me that are in the middle. Listen, I don't want to speak for any other media member. I think a guy who has covered this team as fairly and as balanced as anybody I've seen all year, Jack Pilgrim does an incredible job. I'll be curious to see what he has to say because he's like me. He's not overreact after one game. He's not fire Cal after one game. But what do they say? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over. And how many times can you keep 
coming back and assuming things will be different. We're talking about 2019 is the last time that Kentucky made a Final Four, made, made, made it to the second weekend. Forget a Final Four. 2019 to the second weekend. Think about who's made it to the second weekend since then. Florida Atlantic last year. Uh, San Diego State. Um, you know, Arkansas has made Arkansas has made it three times to the second weekend since then. Alabama has made it to the second weekend twice since then. So I just, you know, I don't know what Mitch is going to do. I, listen, this, I know it's easy to say. This does feel different though. Because again, what else can you possibly say at this point? What else can you say? What else, what other change can you make? I don't know what the answer is. What else we got? Cal should have stayed at school like Memphis. That's how disappointed by Kevin says Cal should have stayed at a school like Memphis that isn't disappointed by all the tourney disasters. You have this many disasters with this many good players. Uh, I, you know, it would have happened eventually. Um, I don't think Cal made a mistake by going to Kentucky. I mean, listen, guy made what? Four final fours in his first six years there? 11, 12, 14, and 15. I mean, he made four final fours in his first six years. The problem is what I will say, <coughs> Cal... And he said it when he took the job. He said, like, you know, uh, this is a job that you take for two or three years, for five or six years. You don't stay here forever. But at a certain point, the going got so good, he ended up staying. And now it's just, it's toxic. And what's crazy is I've been thinking about this for a while. I don't know that I can ever remember a situation quite like this where, um, where you have a legendary coach that you can't get rid of. Maybe Bobby Bowden at the end, but you know, Joe Paterno, obviously we know how that went down, but it's like, I, I can't remember a situation quite like this where you have a coach that's too stubborn to step aside. He's clearly not operating at the level that he was. And that's why I think it might be different is because this feels like the time where it's like, Oh, maybe this isn't going to end the way that we all think it's going to end. By the way, this freaking Kansas Sanford game is getting bonkers. Let's keep the conversation going. Any more questions? FAU coach is the hottest coach in the country. I'll say this, you know, I'll be very interested if Louisville ends up getting him because I am not sold on Dusty May as the head coach. You know, this is a guy that listen, made one final four incredible one final four. That's no, that's not a discredit to Dusty May, but you know, as co coach four seasons before that, Never made the tournament. This year, I think you could argue, was kind of a disappointment. And oh, by the way, in that NCAA tournament run last year, remember, they were down by like four points with a minute to go against Memphis. So we got to go. By the way, my wife is heading up here in a minute. So uh, we'll keep the party going. It's okay. She'll be okay. Um, what else we got? What else we got? What else we got? I think as long as recruits keep coming in, Cal will keep coming back. He's got the number two class and is getting 8.5 million. Why wouldn't Cal come back? No, listen, you know, and, th and that's where I think he has to look himself in the mirror and say, do I want to keep doing this? Do I want to keep doing this? Because there will never be an easy time to step away. He is going to bring in enough talent where he is going to continue to win. And so it's not like there's ever going to be a year where there's no recruit sign and where it's easy to step away every year. As long as he's there, he's going to bring in good recruits. He's got four or five, five stars lined up for next year. And so we'll see what happens there. By the way, am I missing something in this game? Uh, we have a four point game. Kansas is ahead. We'll keep you posted there, but no, James, James, James says, I think as long as the recruits keep coming in, Cal's going to keep staying. I, I just, I don't know why I, I there's never going to be a time where he doesn't have a great recruiting class coming in because for kids, they don't really care. Like I hate to say it, but the players are just like, dude, whatever. Let's um, let's go get developed for the NBA and then bounce. So I, I don't know that it's going to change. By the way, at some point I got to talk about some of these other games, but it's okay. Talent don't win when they don't know how to prepare for the stage. That's the disappointing thing. That is the disappointing thing. The team was not prepared. I keep saying it, but I like the first four minutes. I, I'm telling you, I, I swear I didn't tweet it. So there's no way for me to prove it. I mean, I could show you the text, but I was watching that game and I was like, 
Oakland is killing them on the boards. A guy named Yenso, I feel bad criticizing him. He's getting pushed around. It's like, what are we doing? So, I don't really know. I don't really know. I don't really know. What else we got? It's sad to see you're hearing about the game. We all know this team can play defense, but it is a pure, this team, no show at all. Um, Yeah, they no show. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. Uh, let's keep it going. Next question, Matt, as this game goes final. One and done's cost you every time. Well, I'll tell you what. One and done's cost you every time. Yeah. Um, but I mean, they, they cost you every time, but, but, but I, I really think, you know, listen, it's easy to say, I do feel like if they had somehow gotten through this game, that was the worst Reed Shepard was going to play. That was the worst Rob Dillingham was going to play. And I actually think they would have matched up really well with their next opponent. And then maybe you get hot, you get rolling. Um, but I just, I just, yeah, I mean, you know, but, but the freshman did not show up. I don't think there's any doubt. They all, except for Justin Edwards, look nervous. I cannot believe that happened. By the way, great crowd tonight. I appreciate everybody jumping in. Cal to an admin role, Rochelle says. Um, listen, he's got it in his contract, right? He's got it in the contract that he can, um, you know, get a million dollars a year to be an administrator. And so, um, yeah, I think he, I listen, I'm not telling you what he will do. I'm just telling you, I think he should consider stepping aside. Drew Sermatt, any last questions? Because I fire Cal, hire Dan Hurley. Listen, you know, I actually had some UConn fans hit me up. Like, do you think it's possible? I got to look more into Dan Hurley's buyout. But this was why getting Dan Hurley, that big contract last offseason was so important. You can find the tweets where I said it. I said, you have to lock him up at a price that lets him know that UConn values him as one of the best coaches in college basketball. Because I said, remember, coming into the year, there was talk, if UNC falls apart again, would they get rid of Hubert Davis? If Calipari falls apart again, would they get rid of Calipari? Well, we're there with Cal. We're obviously not there with Hubert Davis just yet, um, but it's bad. Really quickly, I just want to spend two minutes on a couple of these other games. I don't really think there's much to talk about. I don't think there's much to talk about. Listen, credit to... Uh, you know, Duquesne was obviously a great story. They beat BYU 7169. Um, you know, the, the coach Keith Dambrot is obviously, you know, his career extends a little bit. Um, listen, I'm not gonna lie, my, my heart's not in recapping the rest of these games. Dayton, uh, obviously that huge comeback. What did I tell you? Uh, they were they were down 56 to 39, go on a 17 0 run. Listen, I told you last week, I said, Steve Alford. Every time you trust him, he's going to let you down. That's exactly what happened. That's why I picked Dayton. I'll say this, Dayton versus Arizona. Arizona's another one. I could be doing this same show on Saturday or Sunday night after the Arizona game because Arizona, there's no excuses. That Dayton team is a team that you should beat. There are no excuses. That is a team that you should beat if you are the Arizona Wildcats. Um, but Arizona dominated today. Kylan Boswell, 20 points. I thought that was an important result. Um, listen. Tell you what, I could sit here and wait till the end of this Kansas game, but I think I'm actually going to go from the Kansas perspective. I pick Sanford to win this game. Um, so yeah, tell you what, this was fun. Well, it wasn't fun. I mean, it wasn't fun if you're a Kentucky fan, but uh, I think we're going to get out of here. Uh, you know, I if you came here for full reaction to the full day, I apologize. This just did not feel like a show where I needed to break down anything other than Kentucky versus um, Kentucky versus uh, Oakland. We'll be back on Friday night, by the way. So we'll be back Friday night. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. Turn on those notifications. We'll be doing a live show Friday. But if you're not subscribed to the show, please make sure to do so. Also make sure to subscribe. Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Music, wherever you listen to podcasts, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to rate and review the show. Go ahead, give us a quick five stars. Follow up. By the way, give me a give me a couple five stars on the Apple page. That would do. You want to do Torres a solid? Make sure to do that. Uh, make sure you're following on social media at Aaron underscore Torres on Twitter, at Aaron Torres Pod on Instagram, Aaron Torres Podcast Questions at gmail.com, Aaron Torres Podcast Questions at gmail.com. Uh, that's all. I'm sorry if you were looking for something else, but this is the story of the night. 
We had to react. The questions were great. The live chat was incredible. Thank you guys for your support. Um, and uh, yes, as Pull Up Shorty says, wifey's looking for you. So I got to go. Stop talking about Steve Alford. I know him personally. Well, I'm sorry you know Steve Alford personally. Great player. Great man. Great man. But always let you down when you need him. They were favored in the, in the Mountain West tournament. Lost the first round. Blew a 17-point lead today. Don't know what you want me to say. Shout out to Torrent Craig. Shout out to Rachel, who hates my voice. I could do this all night, but my little puppy needs to be picked up, and it's getting late. Also, let's see if Stan if Sanford can pull this off. Plus seven, back tomorrow night. Appreciate it.